Hi, I'm Ron Spurenberg, co-founder and CEO of Hi Mama. Welcome to our podcast about all things early childhood education. Today, I speak with Debbie Sluice, the director of Growing Together Family Resource Center in Blenheim, Ontario. Deb has many years of experience in early childhood education, and I thought she would be a great person to host on the podcast because in her years of experience, she has the perspective from being a teacher on the ground to being the director of a child care program with multiple locations. We talk about what has changed in early childhood education since she first started in the field and what has made Growing Together such a successful organization, in particular, the progressive culture that encourages discussion, learning, leadership, and a sense of community. Welcome to the first episode of our podcast. Stick around, because I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Where I wanted to start off uh, with with this was just to get a little bit of background about you and uh, who you are, and then from there, maybe why you decided to work in the field of early childhood education. So um, I've been with um, this organization, Growing Together, for 26 years. Um, I started as a school-age teacher, which I'm always very proud of, you know, that um, it, it's sort of sometimes, you know, it gets a bad rap with school age and having it be, um, you know, a split shift in before and after. But um, I love that age group and um, did the summer camp. And then within, I think, about three or four months, um, the supervisor uh, decided that um, she was going to go to another position, and I applied for it. So I was one of the newest and I think the youngest of staff at that time and uh, sort of just jumped in to the position of being a supervisor. And then uh, we've just grown our organization, and it started out at um, a facility that was for people with uh, mental and physical disabilities. Um, in those days, they built huge institutions, and this was for the employees that worked there. Um, so it was a workplace childcare, which was sort of ahead of its time. And um, so I've always been really blessed with a very progressive board of directors, and um, and they had the foresight to grow our organization. And now we have uh, four locations, school-based locations, and we have a staff of about 65 um, educators and cooks and support administrative staff. And um, I love what I do. I still very much love what I do. So. Um, personally, I'm a mom. I have four children, and uh, I was blessed to have them come with me um, to the child care. Grew up here as well. And um, as of late, in the last number of years, I've been able to be um, the director versus um, more of a program supervisor, and I really enjoyed my role of being um, more a visionary for organization and working with our board of directors and developing our core values um, and then living those out and teaching those to our staff and doing professional development, not only with in-house with our own staff, but within our community and also um, starting to do it more um, in the local areas uh, in our province as well. And I really enjoy that role. That's awesome. Um, okay, so I just want to pick up on a couple of the points there. Um, you said you started out working with school-aged children, uh, including in camps, um, and you really loved working with that age group. Do you think that influenced you in any way in terms of how you approached working in, more in the early childhood education age group? I think so. Um, I definitely... Uh, where we were was really out in a rural area and we had complete access to all of the grounds and so I really enjoyed connecting the early years with nature and we still very much have a focus on that with our uh, summer camps and um, when we can with our PA days that we, um, you know, we try to use the ratio of 60-40 that we're outside 60% of the time and, and indoors 40 and, it, you know, it, and even more so if, if need be and um, even though the ministry sets the guideline of, you know, two hours outside, when it's nice weather, we do as much of our programming outdoors as possible, having snack outside, having picnics for lunch, so really incorporating that piece. So I think that's been an influence on me, and then um, I've been able to bring that with me to our organization and our educators embrace it for sure. Cool. I know that that is a big trend, uh, sort of the push towards more, time outside, more exposure to nature. Is there any other 
big trends or things that you've seen change in your 26 years at growing together? I'm sure there's been a lot of changes, but what really stands out to you as what's changed a lot in what you've been doing in this space in the last 26 years? I think one of the most noticeable uh, noticeable changes is in our environments. So when we initially, when I initially began, um, our playground equipment um, certainly wouldn't meet the standards today. But there was that whole nature element where we had a climber made out of wood, um, and uh, we had a slide built in, built into a hill, and then we saw a trend in the early '90s that took all of that out and was replaced with plastic. Um, and also within the classroom, you know, uh, there was a lot of, like, plastic kitchens and everything was representative, done in plastic, like an apple was a plastic apple, for example. And um, now we've seen it sort of swing back to more natural materials. Also um, around creativity and imagination is encouraged that um, – it doesn't have to look like an apple in order to be representative of an apple, for example. In, in a kitchen center, you might have uh, balls of paper that become food for the children and they're imagining or they're creating their own um, things in the art center that would then be used for food um, in imagination way. So we've seen a real swing back to um, loose materials and uh, much more creativity around what we offer to the children in in um, toy materials, but also just in their overall environment. Interesting. And what type of impact do you think that has on children's learning and development, taking that more natural uh, view of things, more natural spaces, environments where there might be uh, more creativity, more imagination applied? Is that the key part of it? It's a piece of it. I mean, we've, about 10 years ago, transformed from um, a theme-based, uh, very much more of a regimented kind of schedule to an emergent approach, which um, allows the children and gives them so much more freedom and liberty. And we've seen, we saw such a decrease in what typically is called behaviors, so inappropriate behaviors. And, um, you know, we use behavior management. And, and all of that has changed as well. The wording, there's a lot of new words that have come into our vocabulary, which is wonderful because words matter. And, you know, talking about behavior guidance. Um, so I think what we've seen is children um, more relaxed, um, more at peace, just even in our lighting that, you know, that we're offering to the children that is softer. Um, we're conscious of the noise level in the classroom, you know, um, do we need to have extra music playing or can the staff, you know, or the children themselves be singing? Is that the music that we're going to offer or we have musical instruments available? So just being very conscious of the overall uh, environment and um, creating a peaceful one that children feel that they matter. It also should be representative of them. So we want to create a home-like environment. So just like in your home, you would have pictures of your family. You would have pictures of yourself doing various things, um, and they'd be authentic. They wouldn't be like a cartoon picture of a child or a cartoon picture of a dog. It would actually be their dog. So we want um, the environments to be representative of the people that live there. And so that gives the children a sense of belonging, um, a sense of community, um, and a sense of peace, and also um, that they can feel free to express themselves. Yeah, it, it when you, when you speak about it, it seems like it makes so much sense. <laughs> yet, yet there was a time when it sounds like we might have deviated from that a little bit. Um, but it sounds like it's great that we're sort of moving back in that direction. And I know I'm just picking up on some of the words that you're you're saying now. And I know you said some of the vocabulary has changed, and there's some new vocabulary in the field. And I know one of the things that is kind of a hot topic right now in uh, Ontario where where you are is how does learning happen and i just wanted to get your sense of how that might have helped uh, shape or influence uh, any of your vision that growing together or how you've seen that being implemented in other centers or other regions as well well i think what's really exciting is we talk about vocabulary and that when you use a certain term like what is the image of a child um, you're all speaking the same language, meaning you as in um, 
people that are in the early years field, and that could be somebody that is, um, you know, a speech pathologist, or it could be an, you know, early child educator. It could be the JK FDK teacher, but you're using similar um, language um, and vocabulary. So that's really exciting. Where it's starting, it unites us and and um, it gives us a common goal as well for what we what we want and what do children deserve. And we can talk in those kinds of terms. So um, for us, it's really exciting to know that um, the government is promoting this. Um, provincial government, you know, to say that the the image of a child is that they're curious, competent, capable, and full of potential. And that's exciting to me to know that that's being promoted um, through legislation. Yeah, and that it's, we're united in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and speaking from someone who's had exposure to other uh, jurisdictions beyond Ontario. It's great to see the how, how does learning happen come out. Um, it's a pretty, I would say, bold document in terms of where uh, the Ministry of Education wants to take pedagogy in the province. But uh, it's great to see them being bold and and taking those steps to really be, I would say, a place where other. Um, countries and and states may look to for for ideas about uh, early childhood education. So I think it's great as well. I just wanted to to step into a, a bit of a different direction now and talk a little bit more about growing together specifically. So I know just recently uh, the Chatham Daily News. Uh, voted you Reader's Choice uh, as Best Child Care in Chatham-Kent. I can tell you what I'm proud of that we offer here, and I think one of the main focuses is the family. And we value family uh, very highly. Uh, our board of directors does, and, and meaning that when they make decisions, it's through the lens of how is this going to uh, benefit our families. So we definitely hold the child in the center of all that we do, but we also surround that with understanding about the family. And included in that is um, our staff. So as I said, we have 65 um, employees, and they also are all part of families. So we are very conscious of the fact that balancing work um, and their family life and have policies, uh, human resources policies that work to support our educators as mothers um, or fathers. And we've recently hired a couple of males, so that's exciting. And um, we also see ourselves as a family, meaning that our our employees as a team uh, really react to one another as a family in a great supportive way. We have a, like a little um, private group off of our Facebook page where it's called Inspired ECEs. And it's just a little, you know, a small group just for our employees where they can talk to one another. And it's wonderful. You know, somebody will have done something exciting and they post it and an educator from another center, you know, across town will, you know, wow, way to go. That, you know, that's a fantastic idea. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, you know what? And I've got some materials that could extend that if you're interested. And so really to see that, but even on a personal level too, if somebody lost a grandmother or something, you know, they're all um, banding, you know, together as a family. So that definitely is one of the the characteristics I would say um, that I'm very proud of is that our focus is on the family. Yeah, that's I, that's one thing that really stands out for me about growing together is the culture there, and uh, you know the way you've described it about f- creating a family, a community uh, within, and, and extending it right out to the the families and and the the staff as well. Uh, sounds like a really great approach. Um, where everybody is part of that community. Um, and it's, you, you talked about some ideas about how you've gotten that sort of community aspect at Growing Together. Is there any other tips that you might have for other child care programs out there about how you can create that type of a culture? Because culture is a really hard thing to, I guess, create because it kind of cr- is very an organic thing. Um, but is there anything that you you know, you've been able to, to do to kind of help get to that family feeling there? I would say that it starts with um, our core values so that in hiring the right educator who believes in what we believe. 
Um, and then, you know, also offering additional training. For example, there's a um, professional development called Bridges Out of Poverty, which has just shifted my thinking in such a dramatic way and really um, more than even empathy, but really helped me understand uh, families in different situations. So having that understanding makes you also realize that families are all unique and different. So one line and way of communication isn't going to benefit everyone. You're, you need to layer in the way that you're offering dialogue. And I've also just recently been thinking more about how we're offering opportunities for social, uh, social media. And I received some feedback that, for example, my Facebook page felt more like a marketing page. And I, I had, I sort of stung and I thought, oh, well, you know, I think I have to think about that. I want to make sure that families feel that they can dialogue back, that they can respond. So um, I, I need to ask meaningful questions then that will uh, generate those kinds of discussions versus just, you know, being one way that it just looks like a billboard on my Facebook page versus opening for um, discussions. So, yeah, so those are some tips is, is to, um, you know, offer a variety of ways that parents can connect with you. And obviously, um, we just did our uh, parent survey, and right up there with face-to-face -face communication is Hi Mama. So parents totally love um, that we offer Hi Mama, um, and they see it as valuable as having that face-to-face -face conversation with their educator. The whole survey thing, I think, is a really fabulous idea for any childcare programs that aren't doing surveys now. I know I personally would would highly recommend uh, that as sort of like the easiest way to just get some some honest feedback from parents, even if you make it anonymous. So just to make sure you're getting that really candid feedback about how you can make improvements to your programs. Uh, because like you said, family should be uh, really at the center of uh, all the decisions that you're making there. So that's uh, really awesome that you've even taken the time to do that survey and then talk about candidly how you might be able to improve what you're doing on social media to get parents to engage and I know that's a problem you know for for a lot of organizations uh, like even us as Hi Mama too there's always that challenge of you know how do you get your your audience to en engage in discussions back with you as opposed to just sort of posting information out there uh, right. for them to read. I just wanted to make a connection between a couple of the things that we've talked about. So uh, a couple of things you said that uh, have changed quite a bit over the years is sort of the environments that uh, are in uh, early learning spaces and this move from theme-based to emergent curriculum and sort of a more home-like environment as well. Um, how has that how have parents and families reacted to that, if at all? Have you gotten any feedback from them where they've noticed the changes? I do recall one thing uh, I was reading about you is that you actually had some parents in your program and now their children are in your program, which is really amazing. Um, so have you heard anything from them about you know how things have changed over the years? The one thing that families do talk about is the care the children receive. Um, and the attention and the love and um, that that hasn't changed. Um, so I, you're right, I get really emotional almost when I see grandparents that used to be my parents um, come and knowing that children that were here valued what they received in their childhood from us and are honoring us, you know, by bringing their own children here. So it's a really neat cycle. And that's one thing that I've also noticed in recent years is how many more grandparents um, are involved in the direct care of their children, um, their grandchildren. So um, we, we, we do have a lot of contact. So that's something else actually I need to think about in terms of communication. Um, for example, one thing that we did was we moved all of our learning stories, which is formalized documentation that our staff do once a month, either on a single child or a group. and um, we moved it into a hallway so it's all together because we noticed grandparents would stop and read what was there, whereas parents are, tend to be more in a rush and, you know, they're rushing here and there to work or school, where grandparents, you know, have that, maybe that little extra time to do so. So we want to make it convenient for them to uh, participate in that. So, um, so to answer your question around have parents noticed a shift, um, I think initially 
when we introduced the emergent approach, there was the fear, is my child going to be ready for school? I think that was probably one of the most common questions we had. And, um, but that gradually has, there's been an understanding of what we're doing through the documentation, through like, hi, mama, when we, you know, are sending um, the activities with the skills and domains from the continuum, um, the elect document, you know, families have a, are growing with their understanding around all of that. And their um, language and vocabulary is also expanding through that use, too. Yeah, that's a good point. I know that's one thing that we're quite passionate about is part of your role is also educating the parents on what you're doing in the classrooms. And and I think that's a key part of helping them to understand, you know, why play-based learning is beneficial to children's development, for example. And I I hope the Hi Mama tool has been able to, to help you to do that. One of the things that I wanted to touch on just a little bit further was you mentioned that you used to be more involved sort of on the ground in the classroom, so let's say in a supervisory capacity or working with the children directory, uh, directly, sorry. and you're, you've now uh, had the opportunity to kind of step back a little bit and uh, take a bit of a different view and, and think a little bit and reflect a little bit more uh, perhaps on some of the things you might change or the directions you might want to go with growing together. Do you think that's been valuable for growing together, uh, for you to be able to have that additional time to reflect on, you know, where where are we going and what are the things that we can improve or change? Absolutely. And it's something that our board of directors has also embraced. On the other end of the spectrum, we've also really changed the way that we're doing professional development with our own staff and our own team, where you know, we're really trying not to do the drive-through type of training where it's very one-dimensional and you have the lecturer at the front, you know, giving the information to people who only retain a small portion of that. And um, what we want is we want our educators to work with the material, to be thinking about it, to own it, to um, expand their own thinking, to build on what they already know. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, speaking uh, from from my position, that's something that I feel like I've noticed has really changed even just in the last couple of years is really this uh, push on educators to challenge, uh, you know, the, the, the status quo, challenge the thinking and do do more critical thinking on their end in terms of, you know, what they're doing in the classroom day to day and also sometimes looking a little bit further out, like you said, which, you know, Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think was really something that you would be doing uh, as an early childhood educator 10 years ago, let's say. No, because we didn't feel that we were the experts. We felt that we needed to uh, be, be sort of taught up, you know, about these things. And um, by, by thinking about these things and applying new knowledge, new research that's coming out so fast and furious... And then looking at our own practice and thinking, how does that fit into um, how I'm uh, educating and how I'm with working with the children? Um, then you can then contribute and share that back as well. I completely agree with you uh, on that point. And just taking it one step further, I think leadership in early, in early childhood education is so important right now. How do you think we can develop more leaders, the leaders of tomorrow in early childhood education? Well, I, I, I sort of conflicted on this because we have such a variety of personalities uh, here, and there are some that definitely like to be more behind the scenes. And those are, actually, I've, I've learned that and discovered that when I asked the staff, how do they like to be acknowledged for a job well done? And very few liked sort of, you know, at the front of the staff meeting and to be, you know, sort of a big hurrah. Most of them liked it, you know, please just come in and, and notice the details, the small things, and just thank me, um, you know, on a one-to-one kind of um, level. So I worry sometimes people view what what is leadership. Is it standing in front of people and leading that way? And so that's something that I'm thinking more about, too, is what is what is a leader and, and how do they lead? Um, here at Growing Together, we tend to lead as a servant leader, 
Um, and I tend to lead more from behind where I'm coaching, encouraging, inspiring, uh, but I don't need to be out front. And always I try um, to do it with a spirit of kindness so and empathy that I try to put myself in their shoes. So how to do that is to provide individuals with opportunities for leadership and to talk to them about um, where they want to go. So in a performance evaluation, um, talking about what they currently are doing or researching or where do they want to go, and then how can they share that? Would you like to write on the blog? Would you like to discuss this at a staff meeting? Would you like to discuss this just, you know, within your own classroom with your colleagues? How, how do you see yourself as a leader? So it's about encouraging it, but also recognizing everyone's unique. Yeah, that's actually very insightful. There's absolutely different types of leadership. And uh, what I hear you saying is we need to recognize what those different forms of leadership might take and, and different uh, people might lead in different ways, which I think is absolutely true. And then giving them that those opportunities to lead, I do think is also very important uh, because uh, oftentimes, I think in this in this field of, of early childhood education, there might not be that many opportunities. So even that alone, I think, is in itself a great uh, a great opportunity to just give them the chance to, you know, show what they're passionate about. And uh, for different people, that might be different things. Right, and we've had we've seen some of our educators really blossom, um, and like they took on a lead role for. We have a social committee, which is primarily made up of our educators, and then I just, I'm just the money person to help out with the budget piece, but the ideas all come from them, and um, so they plan social events for their colleagues, and typically people, a few of the ladies that would have been behind the scenes um, felt you know, uh, more confident and bold by getting in front or leading these kinds of social activities, so it was, it's been really exciting to see uh, those, those leadership qualities grow in unexpected ways. That's so awesome. I love that idea of having your your staff lead the the social planning. Uh, we do that at Hi Mama as well. We have team members who lead the planning of team events, and it's great. If I think back, you know, on you know what program, what childcare programs are really successful with Hi Mama, and I'm just taking Hi Mama as an example. We find that one of the uh, constant themes is that the directors of these child care programs really empower their staff to have more control over what they're doing day to day. And this is just an example that you've given, but we find that I, I, across the board, giving trusting your staff and giving them the opportunity to learn and grow, but then apply their experience and their knowledge and their education on their own really gives them that sense of empowerment uh, that allows them to be successful with things like Hi Mama and other stuff too. What right. What's your reaction to that? Have you, have you felt that uh, at Growing Together? Absolutely, and I'm glad that you pointed that out because it um, that pleases me and that you can see that and that it's visible because... That's really my personal philosophy is that I would expect that um, I treat them the way that I want them to treat the children. So um, we want them to to all the things you just said about giving independence to the children, giving them opportunities to learn in their own way, to empower them, to respect them, um, to be kind, like all the things that we want, how we want them to interact with children and families I want to treat my staff in exactly the same way. I really love that. Treat them the way that we we would want to treat the children in the classrooms. That's perfectly said, I think, actually. What has enabled you, do you think, to uh, give your staff a little bit more space in terms of maybe how they plan their uh, programs and uh, what they do on a day, day-to-day basis? Uh, what's enabled you to allow them to do that where you can kind of step back and not be you know, worried that something's going to go wrong? Um, you can sort of trust them to, to really use their own experience to uh, deliver programs that are of the quality that you're going to be proud of. Hmm. I wasn't always like this, actually. <laughs> Ten years ago, we, we doubled in size. Um, we were part of a pilot, 
and uh, we received um, funding and just had a very short period of time where we had to expand. So like any business, it's very difficult to just, you know, sort of pop up and, and grow that quickly. And I really felt that I needed to maintain controls, making sure, you know, I had quality controls. So I learned from that because I got pushback from our educators, rightfully so. Um, and I needed to then um, figure out. And so I realized that time, time is a gift. It's a resource. Um, I need to give myself time to think, to plan, um, and also to develop uh, policies. Policies are also a safety net for administration. Um, it sets up expectations right from the start. So, you know, to have clear expectations during a staff orientation. And we have really lengthened that process as well, uh, making it almost a three-day process when we start off a new staff, making sure they really understand what we're about. We just don't throw them in and hope that they swim. Um, and then giving time also if we switch up classrooms, for example, and we have new partnerships. It's like you spend more time with that person than you potentially do with your partner, you know, y your spouse. So we really we want to make sure that, you know, there's an understanding around how do you like to be communicated? How, you know, if I'm not doing something well, how would, you know, your partner can tell you those things without hurting feelings, for example? Or are you more of a person who likes the room organized on a regular basis? Or are you more free-for-all? Or do you like things labeled? So just having all those kinds of open discussions um, right from the get-go, I think, are really important. And, and as administration, I can support my staff by giving them time to do so. But I think you've um, touched on it when you said trust. I need to trust my educators, just as I expect them to trust the child. So um, I also, um, we have checks in, in terms of what the ministry wants us to do. So we do have supervisory uh, regular checks where we go in the classroom. And if there, we do notice there's some deficiencies or some challenges for our staff, um, we have meetings with them. We coach them. Uh, we figure it out together and find out what the barriers are or what we can do to support them. Awesome. I know you're just in, in the small town of Blenheim, Ontario, but you know, to be that leading edge um, in Chatham-Kent uh, with early childhood education is, uh, I think, a really massive achievement. So congratulations on that. Thank you. For me, it's what I want for my children. I, I like Childhood to me is so precious, and so I, I couldn't be anything less. I have no doubt that one of the best forms of reward that you get is seeing those children that were in your programs years ago coming in with their children today. Uh, I just got goosebumps. When you say it, it's like, yeah, I love it. Love it, love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, last but not least, where can people find you online, Deb? The website's probably the uh, easiest place because it's got all of our other social media outlets on it, on the, on the homepage. Perfect. So, and what's the, what's the address of the website? Uh, www.gtfrc.org. Awesome. What's your name? Michaela. Michaela, how are you? Hi. You having fun playing? Yeah. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. What's your favorite thing to play out here? Playing monsters. You like to play monsters? Do you like to swing? Okay, what else do you like to do? Play with my Dora bike. Oh, with your Dora bike? Oh, okay. Do you ride fast? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, have fun here. All right. <laughs>